things were less than a year ago, I could barely get out of bed before lunchtime. Now I have qualifications and I know exactly what I, do, what I want to do with my life. UK Online Census has helped me in so many ways. I get up early, I'm off the drink, and I want to help other people to do the same. I'm determined to push myself to the limit and beyond. I know I can do it. He's helping in a UK Online Centre. I'm employed by UK Online Centres, that's my day job. Telecentre Europe is my volunteer other job. Um, he works in a UK Online Centre now. He's been empowered to turn his life around and move on. And that's why I get up in the morning and do this job and why lots of the staff in the centres across the whole of Europe do this job. <coughs> So, it empowers young people, it empowers women, it empowers older people. Um, talking of empowered women, um, Neil Kroos has used the phrase, the phrase is now everywhere, every European digital. For me, that is a huge statement to make. Uh, and we've got a, a statement in the UK which is digital by default, which allows people, uh, which encourages people to, to use government services to see digital as the natural thing to do. It encourages our government departments to choose digital as the way forward, and I'm sure Graham's going to mention and talk about that later. I want to just quickly mention um, a report that I came across a couple of weeks ago called the Network Readiness, Global Network Readiness Report, something like that. Um, and it's about 180 pages, so it's quite dull. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not going to tell you not to read it, it's very good, but it's very long. The, the, the key thing to kind of pick out for me was a little bit of information that I drew from it. There's a table, there's a chart of all the countries in the world and how <laughs> network ready they are. Quite know what that means, but anyway, they've taken a measure of, of a number of different indicators, and Europe has 11 countries in the top 20. And I sat and wondered about that, and I thought there must be a reason why Europe has 11 countries in the top 20. And yes, developed countries, yes, it's Europe with a long history. But then I thought th th there are lots of other countries around the world that have policies and initiatives. Why is Europe so prevalent? And it started to dawn on me that it's probably because of the fact that A, there is a huge number of organisations and stakeholders working to try and do something about it. But B, we've had a policy framework for at least 15 years with the European Commission pushing and putting a framework around governments to say digital inclusion is important. You should do something about it. Here's some figures, try and fix it. So, for me, every European digital is kind of a, a continual reminder that for the last 15 or so years, we've been developing the port to the point where Europe is actually a world leader in digital inclusion. Um, if you look at other regions around the world, and, and I work also with the global body of telecentre.org, Europe is seen as a trailblazer. We are, we've got lots of stuff going on. We've got lots of people doing very interesting things. And the rest of the world is really interested in what we do. So the fact that we've got a policy body that is seriously pushing this agenda forwards is really quite significant. And I think it's, it's kind of testament to people like Neely that we've got a status whereby we are looked at with envious eyes around the world. Okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to miss this particular opportunity though to just mention that, despite that, the networks and the organisations that are delivering digital inclusion on the ground are struggling because resources are dwindling. They're being asked to do more with less. Now I understand that, and we're in a new economic era. But the point is that people need support and help. These two people uh, are here in Belgium. Um, and this was a session that was run during our Get Online Week campaign, the Telecentre Europe organised a Get Online Week campaign back in March, 
shamelessly stolen from UK online centres who has been doing it for two or three years prior to that. But the point is, that's what they do. We, we take ideas and we use them and we share them around. This particular session was a, um, the trainer becomes, sorry, the trainee becomes the trainer for a day. And the, the lady on the right hand side is teaching the girl on the left hand side. She is on a course herself and she's doing an advanced web course. Uh, the young girl is just starting out on a journey. You might expect that she would, she would not need it, but there are still young people who need kind of internet basic awareness. So there's different models, and I want to talk about a few of those different models. So again, same session. Tutors are crucial to this whole model. The people who work in centres are absolutely essential. Um, and Telecentre Europe is a network of, of networks, so UK Online Centres is a member. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a number of different people who are here. Uh, Mara from uh, Latvia, Lichta is here. Uh, I think I saw Pedro from Esplai is here. We've got a whole pile of different organisations from right across Europe who are members of Telecentre Europe, who, have, who represent organisations who help people to use technology, who have tutors in their organisations who help people to use um, uh, computers and the internet. We're across 33 countries, uh, plus a whole bunch of others from around the world are interested and are kind of joining in our social network. We believe there's about 30,000 telecentres across Europe. And a telecentre, just, just if it's the first time you've heard that word, it's not a word that, that slips easily off the tongue. It, it's a word that, that's a little bit awkward. It's more widely known in other parts of the world, particularly in Spanish-speaking in, in Spanish parts of the world. But it just means a place where you can go to get help to use a, to use a computer. They could be libraries, they could be uh, voluntary sector, they could be third sector, they could be government bodies, they could be private, private organisations, but they just help people to connect with technology and use, use the internet. Um, I'm also not going to miss this opportunity to thank the people who have supported us to do campaigns like Get Online Week, it's specifically Microsoft, who have been a long-standing supporter and have helped us significantly, significantly to develop the works and the programmes that we do. Uh, Liberty Global have also supported us and taken, taken specific interest in Gets Online Week. Um, and Telecentre.org Foundation, the global body, also supports us. Uh, obviously, I'll thank the, the kind of other support that we get from the European Commission, um, but it, it wouldn't happen without the people on the ground. Next. Right. What is it that happens? This is a slide that I hope will explain to you the process that people go through. Now, um, Andrea's going to be looking at this with interest because I know he's going to talk about this later in more detail probably. Um, but for me, it's a journey. And it's a journey from inclusion through engagement onto empowerment. And it isn't necessarily linear, so this is where um, Andrea will be, will be able to kind of elaborate on it. People branch off. They don't necessarily start at the bottom and work their way up. Um, People might jump straight in and go for, they're interested in the social stuff or they're interested in entertainment. They might want to do eBay, that's the first thing they're interested in doing, or it may be Facebook. So they, they might jump in in the middle and drop back down to do some functional stuff later on. Uh, but they end up, up the top end, being content creators, being completely empowered by it. Um, and the ultimate end is that, that they end up creating stuff that could be entrepreneurial. Yeah, okay. So, this is um, a centre in France, and I, I just wanted you to note the fact that you've got three tutors helping people around the room. This is a typical centre, um, and I think one of the things to understand is that that looks quite a friendly and nice <coughs> place for you and I, but, oh, no, but to a new learner who's never walked into a centre like this, that can be quite daunting. You've got a bank of computers there. You've got a whole set of techie stuff. And that's quite a scary place for lots of people. And they're, sometimes they're around the outside of the room, sometimes they're in the middle of the room. But I'm trying to, to explain that, that this is not as inviting as it might seem. It's a scary thing to start learning technology. There's a centre that I know in Bristol who run their first session in the car park because they know that getting people to step over the threshold into the room is the most difficult challenge. 
So they, they have a kind of calm you down, introduce you to the tutor, get to know you a little bit in the car park before they start. That's important to understand. Okay. okay let's try next. Okay. It's not just about the places. It's also about the different models. And we've got <coughs> as many different models as you've got centres. Um, and they do lots of different things in different ways. So this is a, this is a session that's taking place in Latvia. Uh, this is an intergenerational learning um, session. And it's young people teaching older people about Facebook. Now the interesting point, again relating back to yesterday and what Neil Crow said, um, that children, yeah, maybe they should have their privacy settings. Well, the fact is that, that yeah, children use Facebook, children use social networking, my kids do. Um, and I can't stop them doing that, and I wouldn't frankly want to, but I do want to protect them, I do want to make sure they're safe while they're online. Um, but this is a specific session that, that kind of recognises the fact that kids use Facebook and gets them to teach the adults. So this is a Facebook session being taught by the kids to the parents and grandparents. Okay, you've also got peer learning that goes on. And again, this is another photograph from Latvia. Um, older people are quite scared by younger people talking about technology. They need people to be at the same level as them. And it makes such a difference when you've got someone who's, who's of your age could be a neighbour, could be, could be a friend, that helps to start you on the journey. Because it's a scary thing to do. It's really quite daunting. Um, so there's lots of different models, there's lots of different ways of doing things, there's lots of different partnerships that take place as well between organisations, and I'm going to talk about that in a, little, in a moment. Um, that one. Okay, so the session that we're having later is about employability, well, the, well the, one of the breakout sessions, and I'm not going to... The, other, the others are just very important. The session that we're going to run a bit later is about employability. Um, and there's a whole pile of resources that are available. There's, we're going to show some resources downstairs in the coffee break, but there's also the ECDL resources that are down now. I urge you to look at every, all the resources that are available. Uh, they're not just about employability, but a whole range of other stuff. Um, and what's important to understand is that there's, there's, there's a mountain of stuff out there to help people get engaged and to learn and to begin to understand about technology. But I think there's some, I've got a quote as well, hang on, because it's their voices that is important to me. Um, there's a centre that's in Blackpool, and it has a partnership with a local Job Centre Plus office. And this is a quote from the centre manager who says, We have computers available in our centre, but twice a month we go across to the Job Centre itself, so we're right in front of people's noses. If they can get going in familiar surroundings, they're far more confident coming to us. So they have a partnership with their local Job Centre Plus office and they go over to the Job Centre, they get engaged, they get involved and then they bring the, the learners back to the centre. That's quite an important model to understand and it, it's, it's quite deep engagement. The Job Centre Plus manager, and this, I'm going to say this, this quote now because it's quite important and then I'll say it again during the workshop, Often people don't just realise how important IT skills are when you're looking for a job. These days, 90% of all jobs need IT skills, 80% of jobs are advertised online, and 13% aren't, aren't advertised any, offline anywhere. So, getting a job means being online. Okay. Colombo Giampero. And I hope I have pronounced his name correctly. Um, this is not him, this is another session, but he's an older person, he's 70, he's a retired bank employee in Milan. We, we reached him during the Get Online campaign, and this little quote, I really like this because it, it shows that we don't necessarily think of, of IT and why people learn IT. You have to think of different things. So, he said, consider that I used to work in a bank, but I always tried to avoid tasks in, entailing the use of computers. Now I'm retired, I realise I can't do without them. I read about Get Online Week in the newspaper and I decided not to waste the chance. Now I'm 70, I've realised the internet is a tool for all ages. He tried to avoid using computers when he was at work. I kind of get that, I understand that, I know that feeling. Um, but now he's retired, he's got to catch up. And that's a really important <coughs> thing to understand, that, that people who are older or, or newly retired 
may be in that category. They may not have, they may have tried to avoid computers while they're at work. Okay. Um, I ran a centre for seven years before I, I worked for UK Online Centres. Uh, I live in, in Devon, down in the southwest of England. And I ran a centre that helped people to do empowerment stuff. And uh, I worked with a group of young people who had disabilities, a variety, a mixed bag of disabilities. Uh, one of the young people, okay, one of the young people was um, deaf, completely deaf. And we were doing flash, we were doing animation, we were doing music generation, we were doing um, a whole range of creative stuff. The thing he wanted to do was the music generation. He wanted to do it because he was deaf and because he wanted to create music. And that was really quite kind of significant for me. Uh, and we used a little, a little program called DJ. This was, this was several years ago now. Uh, it's probably much different. But you could create pictures, and, and, and he created patterns on the screen. Even though he couldn't hear the music, he was creating patterns by, by just using the technology. I've got to move on. How long have I got? Okay, I'm there. Right. So, quickly, this is a graph that shows... This was a survey that we did in the UK, which shows um, relative different comparisons between your, your understanding, your, your confidence that you felt before, and the inner, the, the faint blue line was before you were online. So these are offline people. The darker blue line is once you were online. Now most of them are actually quite similar, except for one, down the bottom, skills to get a new job. People perceive themselves not to be prepared to get a job if they were offline. Really important. We then did another survey after they got online and they then felt so much more connected to their community, they felt so much more connected, to, they felt less concerned about their health, about their work, about their, they didn't feel concerned about their training needs. So it's that perception that, that once you're online, things aren't going to change. This is a barrier that we're talking about here. But actually when you get online, you suddenly discover that actually you didn't know what you were talking about before. Okay, I'm moving on really quickly. Sometimes it is about the money. So I've been talking about people, but for if there's any economists in the room, now is the time to wake up because I'm going to start talking about numbers for very quickly. So in the UK, the UK Digital Champion, and Graham will probably talk about this later, uh, raised a, a case to government that there was £1.2 billion pounds worth of savings by bringing people online just for government departments to transfer people from one face-to-face -face or telephone service online, based on one transaction a month. That calculation is based on one, trans one transaction saved, transferred a month. We've been doing some research for the last couple of years that it's not one a month, it's actually 2.3 a month, which might not sound like a massive difference, but actually it's quite significant over the years. So that would equate to 240 pounds, sorry, 240 euros per person per year. You then start to get the, the Nazi bit. You then start to multiply that by 130 million citizens, and that's 31 billion euros a year in transaction savings across the whole of Europe. For all the people who are offline, that's what governments across Europe could be, could be saving. Now, okay, I'm applying the English maths, and I'm applying English costs and stuff like that. See, I need some clever people like Gabrielle to do some, some, some maths on this stuff, to do it properly. But whether it's half that figure, it's still astronomically enormous. Okay, and just quickly, it, that would equate to 27 million quid for the, the 112,000 people who are on our, Right, my last slide. So, let's see if I can find the last slide. This lady is called Shagufta. She has been empowered. She was offline, she was a migrant to the UK, she had no computer skills whatsoever. I'm going to read a quote again. For me, learning about computers and the internet has opened up a whole new world. I didn't know anything about them before I came here, but now I'm on the internet all the time and I find it fascinating. When I started last year, I didn't even know how to turn the computer on, what to do with a mouse, or how to read instructions on the screen. In the first few weeks, I wrote notes by hand about what I had to do, so I would remember. I was determined to learn. My brothers and sisters are in the United Arab Emirates. It's very expensive buying phone cards to call such a long way, but email means we can keep in touch with for free. I would never have been able to afford to learn all of this otherwise, and I can tell you, I can't tell you 
the difference that it's made to my life and my family. Being able to email has really helped my confidence and made my world seem much more interesting. Now, and this is, this is the bit for me that, that rocks my boat, now I can see a photograph from Pakistan in five or ten minutes rather than having to wait ten days for the post. We forget that stuff. We completely forget how it used to be. We can share stuff in minutes, in moments. We can see some, something that's happening almost live. That is so empowering for people, and it's, that's the stuff that we've got to remember when we're doing all the other things. So, that's me. Um, I'm going to be around, I'll be in some of the panel discussions and the employability session, and we'll be downstairs, so please talk to me, please talk to my colleagues. And I just want to make one other special mention. Uh, there's a lady here who's a digital champion from the UK, um, and her name is Vicky, she's sat over there, and I want stand up, stand up, to just stick your hand up in the air. She is a very inspiring and, and empowered person. She's a volunteer working in Blackpool, and she works and helps people to get online. Talk to her. She knows stuff that I didn't even know was possible. So please go and say hello to her at some point. Um, I know she would value that. Thank you.